Welcome back to Sunday Night in America. When someone is arrested, indicted, tried, convicted, or sentenced, there are multiple layers of review. Prosecutors, defense attorneys, judges, juries, appellate courts, and you can review those decisions. But what happens when there is no arrest, no charge, no prosecution? Who gets to review that? Neither Hunter Biden nor Joe Biden has been charged with anything. It could be there is no evidentiary basis for charging. It could be there is some evidence, but not enough. It could be there is plenty of evidence and someone has his thumb on the scale. How will you know if no one gets to review the evidence, which is why Congress wants to see what the FBI has? Congress formed the FBI and DOJ. Congress funds those agencies. When you start something and you pay for something, you should be able to see if that something is working as intended. We know a couple of things. A source deemed credible by the FBI relayed serious allegations against President Biden. Just because a person is credible does not mean the information is. Honest people can get exposed to unreliable information, but you should investigate to see. The FBI opened an investigation into President Trump based on a conversation in a bar. If you're wondering, that's not great evidence. It's at least double hearsay. But he was investigated for years. What about President Biden? How did the FBI handle allegations against him? What about Rachel Rollins, the Biden-appointed U.S. attorney for Massachusetts? DOJ told DOJ she made a false statement, and yet nothing was done. So which false statements get the attention of Biden's Justice Department, and which ones do not? Why the disparate treatment? Congress is entitled to review decisions not to charge. Congress cannot interfere with an investigation, but Congress can certainly ask what is taking so long and whether there is different treatment for different people. House Oversight Chairman James Comer from the great state of Kentucky joins us now. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Chairman. Tell us what you wanted from the Bureau and why you wanted it. Well, the reason we wanted this information is we had whistleblowers approach Senator Grassley about uh, their concern that there was this Form 1023 in existence and the FBI had never investigated it. Uh, so we requested the form and honestly, Trey, the FBI tried to act like for weeks that the form didn't exist. And not until Senator Grassley and I got on the phone with Director Ray and Senator Grassley told Director Ray that both uh, Senator Grassley and myself had already read the Form 1023 from a whistleblower, so we knew darn well it existed, did he finally admit that it did exist? So once uh, the FBI allowed me and Jamie Raskin, uh, my counterpart on the House uh, Oversight Committee, to go in and look at it, I read it again and it realized that there were two footnotes in there that referenced other 1023s. So, you know, this is going to turn out, I think, a lot like the suspicious activity reports that the Treasury Cabinet had on the Bidens. There are a lot more of these than what the federal government wants to admit. And the question is, why hasn't the federal government done anything about it? I mean, we've already brought out, Trey, and you know that the Biden family had 20 shell companies, that the sole purpose, it appears, for those shell companies was to launder money through six different banks, and the banks called it money laundering in the suspicious activity reports. They laundered money from foreign nationals and then transferred that money to nine different Biden family members. I mean, this is a serious crime that it appears the only entity in, a, in the world that's investigating it is the House Oversight Committee. Speaking of House Oversight and your colleague, Jamie Raskin, he said the matter was investigated and closed. I want you to listen to this, and then I'll ask you a question on the other side, Chairman. That was checked out um, by the U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania, Scott Brady, and that um, assessment 
of this tip came back empty handed. They said there's no grounds to escalate this from an initial assessment to a full blown criminal investigation or a preliminary investigation. They said there just wasn't enough there. Now, A.G. Barr, um, who has a, a, a very complicated relationship with President Trump, says that's completely false. Uh, that that he didn't close it. Uh, what can you tell us? Oh, Raskin says it was looked at and closed. Was it? No, Jamie Raskin lied, and the FBI told us that it was still a part of an ongoing investigation. So what I believe has happened, Trey, is that according to Bill Barr, then Attorney General, they got the Form 1023, and because it was from one of the FBI's most credible highest paid, most trusted, most effective informants. They took it seriously, but they didn't look into it. They just passed it along to the U.S. attorney in Delaware. So what, what Jamie Raskins is talking about isn't even the same thing. The Form 1023 pertaining to Joe Biden and bribery was passed along, according to the FBI and Bill Barr, to the U.S. attorney in Delaware who was investigating Joe Biden. It also may be turned over to the special counsel. Remember, there's a special counsel investigating Joe Biden for mishandling classified documents. He just hasn't been in the news a lot. So according to the FBI and according to Bill Barr, Joe Biden is currently under investigation for bribery. And this gets lost in tra translation because the, the media is so focused on, on Donald Trump. Look, Here's what we know. There are 20 shell companies, at least, and probably more, uh, that, that were laundering money from foreign nationals, including Romania, including money being sent less than two weeks after Joe Biden left there as vice president, uh, delivering foreign aid and, and talking about foreign policy. This Form 1023 alleges the exact same thing happened in Ukraine. And the reason I think it's credible, Trey, is because this was dated, this last 1023, in June or July of, of 2020, three years before anybody knew about the shell companies and knew that the Bidens were laundering money through six different American banks. In the 1023, the informant says that the payee alleges that he paid the bribe to the Bidens and, and that no one would ever find it because the way they set it up, they they transferred the money through so many different banks, it would take 10 years for investigators to find out. So he laid out the case for what we've already proven, that the Bidens had all these shell companies set up while he was vice president to be able to uh, uh, profit and, and then launder the money down to the Biden families. Chairman Jamie Comer, and you had to threaten to hold the FBI director in contempt of Congress just to get what he claimed didn't exist. Chairman, thank you for joining yep. us on a yep. Sunday night. Thanks for having me, Trey. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.